What's up everyone and welcome back to another video in my updated Easter Egg Guide series where we combine cheat sheets, shortcuts, and just plain logic to beat every Easter Egg in COD Zombies history. Today, we are doing 9. A pretty easy Easter Egg, but there are one or two steps that have been changed since most guides have came out, so you probably don't know how to actually do them. So if you find this guide helpful, be sure to drop a like, share it with your friends who need help as well, and if you still need help after watching this, comment down below and I will try to help you out even further. But with all that being said, let's jump straight into the class setup. For your perks, there's actually a bunch of combinations you could run. You definitely want to run Dying Wish and Victorious Tortoise. From there, you can run any of the following perks really. You can run Time Slip, you can run Death Perception, Yes, I'm being serious about that. Or you could run Stamina. I personally would recommend running Winter's Realm the modifier slot and then having your third perk either being Time Slip or Death Perception. But it's all up to you, it doesn't really matter. For your specialist, you could bring the Hammer, but I would recommend bringing the Viper and Dragon. There is one step in this quest that is very hard to beat if you don't have a ranged specialist and the Viper and Dragon gets rid of that problem. For your starting weapon, you want to bring the Strife, although doesn't really matter. And for your equipment, you want to bring Wraith Fires. And finally, for your elixirs, you want to bring anywhere but here, Temporal Gift, Stock Option, and Equipment. All of these are very important and you will probably end up using every single one of them during this quest. To beat this easter egg, you're going to want to get the Death of Orion, you're going to want to get Homunculus, and you're going to want to either get the Hallion or the Hades if you have the Crossbar Operator mod on it, or you could buy the Spitfire off the wall, again, if you have the Wildfire Operator mod on it. When you first spawn in, just stay in the spawn room and work on your trials until you get your third challenge completed. Doing this will do two things. Number one, give you a Pack-a-Punch Strife, which will be really good for unlocking Pack-a-Punch. And number two, it'll unlock one part that we will need later on for the Easter Egg. Now with saying that, of course, if you get the challenge where you have to slide under a Blade Trap, obviously go do that, and once you have your Strife, go ahead and unlock Pack-a-Punch. While you're doing this, I suggest you grab all the Shield parts as well. There are, of course, three spawn locations for three parts each, making a total of nine spawn locations. The typical amount of spawn locations for something in a Treyarch map, but I guess it kind of fits the map at least. But one part spawns in every tower except for the Dano Tower, so look around for those. Obviously, here's all the locations. And when you have all the shield parts, go down in the pit and craft the shield. Once you do that, go in the temple and unlock Pack-a-Punch. And at this point, we need to get to round 10 before we can actually continue with this easter egg. But in the meantime, we can get some things done in the map. One of which is getting the wonder weapon. There's two ways to do this. The first is obviously just by getting it out of the mystery box, which you could use the fire sails you get from the crowd for having good affinity as a way to get everything you need out the box, or you could just do the side quest. To get the free wonder weapon, go out pack a punch via the Danu and Raw side, and then look in this window and you will see a bulb with fire in it. If you shoot this bulb, it should fall over, and now, there is a part somewhere in the map that you have to collect. The easiest way to tell is by unlocking the drawbridge connecting Danu and Ra, and if you look at the ground in front of the bridge, you will see a flaming arrow pointing to one of the four towers. Wherever that arrow is pointing is where the part is. Here's all the locations for where the head can spawn, but there's only one spawn location per tower, thankfully, so this isn't too hard to find, but once you do, pick it up and now we need to build the acid trap. To do this, again, it's not really that difficult. There's two parts to the left and to the right of the pack punch machine that always spawn in the same spot. And the third part you can get from accepting your third reward that you get from doing your trials, it'll spawn in the center of the podium. Once you have all three parts, make your way to the entrance of either Danu or Ra's tower and craft the acid trap on this skull. Then look at the metal grate right in front of the entrance, place down the head, and activate the acid trap. Now obviously don't stand in it, otherwise you will die, but when the acid trap is done, it'll reveal a key. Pick it up, and now you need to keep good affinity for at least a whole round. The easiest way to raise your affinity is by doing stuff like completing trials, killing gladiators, and getting trap kills. Just make sure you don't step in the fire or go down though, as that will lower your affinity. Your thumb doesn't have to be all the way up, just as long as it's green and it says item available, it will work. Once you have good affinity with your item being available, end the round and you should hear this quote. And when you do, you will see the crowd throwing in the map a golden cup. Find it on the ground and pick it up and make your way to the bottom of the Danu Tower. 
and then knife this tree to place the key and interact with the ground underneath the key to place the cup. Now all you have to do is end the current round that you're on and go back to the cup and it'll be full. You can now pick it up and go to the mystery box. If you go to the side of the mystery box, it'll give you the option to poison it. Do this to turn it green and then hit the box to get the free Death of Orion. Now that you have the Wonder Weapon, to start the first step of this easter egg, we need to grab three parts. And the first one we'll cover is the skull. Get to the end of the round and go to the pack punch room. Somewhere in this room of skulls, there will be one skull in particular that looks different from the rest of them. Now I know this sounds like a massive headache to do, but actually it's not too bad. There are 12 spawn locations in total, and the skull is smaller than the rest of them, it is brighter than the rest of them, and additionally, it has a small symbol on it. So as I said, there are 12 spawn locations in total, I'm showing you all 12 right now. Additionally, I will throw a map up on the screen, after I show you all the spawn locations, so if you just want to save this in your photos for later or something, feel free to do so. But it's pretty much six spawn locations on one side, and then those six spots mirrored on the other side of the pack bunch room. So this honestly shouldn't be too hard to find keeping only one zombie left. Once you do find it, however, you want to get as close to the skull as you can and pull out your specialist. For some reason, doing so will cause the skull to come out of the wall and you can pick it up. Once you have the skull, make your way to the flooded crypt area, which is right outside of Pack-a-Punch, on the opposite side of where the shield table is. And in this tiny room right here, you have to find a red skull grinder. There's three locations, all in this tiny room, so it's not hard to find. Once you find it, place the skull in the skull grinder, and shoot charged wonder weapon shots at the grinder to grind the skull. After you shoot three charged shots, the skull should not be visible anymore, and you can interact with the grinder, and you should be able to hear you picking the skull up, as well as a character quote. Once you do that, we have one of the three parts that we need. The second part is obtained by getting bad crowd affinity. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either do this by throwing grenades in the crowd, or just by running in fire in the map. If you're running Wraith Fires, then your only choice is going to be running through the fire. Keep running through fire, and once you have a red thumb with an item available, the crowd should throw a pile of poop into the map. Once they do, walk over to it to collect it, and that is part 2 of 3. The final part can be obtained starting on round 10. That's because this is the earliest round that the destroyer, or the axe guy, or whatever you want to call him, can spawn into the map. When he spawns, do not kill him. It is very important that you keep him alive. If you so happen to kill him, then you'll have to wait until he spawns in again, which I believe is round 14. So you don't want to do that. A quick tip you can do though, is you can kill all of the normal zombies in the map, except for him. And since he counts as a normal zombie, he will be the last zombie alive and the round will not end. So once you do so, bring him to the spawn room, and you will see these two wooden pyres next to the podium. You need to get the destroyer to throw his axe through one of the pyres to break off a piece of wood. Get some distance between him and one of the pyres, and stand next to the pyre, and when he goes to throw his axe, move behind the pyre. And that should break the wood off of it. So look at the ground for a broken piece of wood, and if you can collect it, make your way down to the bottom of the Odin Tower, and place the wood in this cauldron. Once you do, you can now end the round. At this point, I recommend you start getting all of your perks and your Pack-a-Punch because for the next couple of steps, we have to advance two non-special rounds and able to proceed with this easter egg. So when you place down the wood, you can end the round and after two non-special rounds, you can go back to the cauldron and pick up the wood and then make your way to the bottom of the Zeus Tower. When you're here, you want to place the items in this bowl. Now, if you interact with the bowl and you don't see anything in it, then you did not grab one of the parts. You either didn't pick back up the wood you didn't grab the poop, or you didn't grab the grinded up skull. So if there's nothing in your bowl, go see which part that you don't have and collect it, and then try placing it again. If you can see something in a bowl, however, then you did grab all three parts, and now you're gonna have to flip another two non-special rounds and go back to the bowl, and the fertilizer in the bowl should be emitting a green mist. So when it is, you can pick it up and then make your way to the bottom of the Danu Tower. We're almost done with this annoying step, trust me and place it in between these two trees. At this point, you should start trying to get Firebomb on your gun as we will need it for the next step. After another two rounds, the fertilizer should turn green again, and now what you have to do is you have to activate Firebomb on a zombie that is standing right on top of the fertilizer. When you do, you should get a white flash, and now all you have to do is stand on top of the fertilizer for around 10 to 15 seconds, and you will get a white flash, and you will be teleported to a different version of Danu's Temple. 
To beat this step, you have to make your way back up to the top of the tower by destroying the red spots on the trees. Use charge shots if you want a weapon to help with crowd control, or if you have homunculus, just throw them and the zombies won't be paying attention to you. After you deal enough damage to the red spots, eventually it will explode, giving you a max ammo. At this point, you can go up to the next floor. Do this all the way until you get to the top, and when you destroy the third and final one, you will get a white flash and you will be teleported back to the normal Danu temple, and the announcer will say that Danu has been appeased. From this point forward, this is a pretty fun easter egg, so if you made it this far, you'll start to enjoy yourself. To appease Brawl, you need to first find four gladiator symbols around the map. There are a total of nine possible locations where they can spawn, and they all look the same. They're not really hard to find since you got basically a 50% chance of finding one, but just look around the map in the locations that I'm showing you, and you will find one eventually. When you do, pull out your shield and shoot it, and this will cause a gladiator to spawn. Now these aren't any normal gladiators, they have like, twice the amount of health as the normal axe guys, so needless to say, they're pretty tanky, but luckily, I have a pretty effective way to kill pretty much anything in the map. While using your wonder weapon, if you spam your shoot and your reload buttons at the same time, it'll rapid fire the wonder weapon. Like I said, by doing this, you can erase pretty much anything in your path in seconds. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison between normally shooting and doing this glitch. The only downside to this is you will fly through your ammo so quick. So I'd recommend to only do this if you have to get out of a tight situation or if you have to kill something that's super bullet spongy like these gladiators. But outside of that, I would just use the wonder weapon normally. But regardless, when you've killed all four gladiators, get a new shield and you need to go to the top of the raw tower. When you're here, you'll see an obelisk with a symbol on it. Interact with it and you will get a white flash. To beat this step, you have to take the four symbols that the obelisk shows you and kill the corresponding enemies in the same order that the obelisk showed the symbols. Here's a cheat sheet that shows you which symbols are for which enemies. Figure out which enemies are in your game, and when the obelisk shows you all four, all of the special enemies will start to spawn in the map. Now, you can kill as many normal zombies as you want. Just be careful you don't kill any like Catalyst, or heavy enemies, or a tiger, or anything like that. This step is why I said you could run Death Perception if you wanted to. Because a lot of people have trouble with this step, and if you run that perk, that makes the hard part of this challenge a walk in the park. If you know exactly where all the enemies are, you can just go to them and kill them rather than having to play the waiting game on one floor. And here's a quick tip, if you get a fire zombie that you have to kill, and he explodes, even if it was his turn to die, if he explodes and you don't kill him, it will automatically fail the challenge. And if you fail for whatever reason, you have to end the round and then come back on the next round to retry this with a whole new order of enemies. So be careful that you do not let that happen. If you do it correctly though, again you will get a white flash, but this time you can go back up to the obelisk and interact with it again to get another set of symbols. Now for the second part of this step, there is a special symbol that can spawn, and that will spawn in a Blightfather. But he can only spawn during the second part of this step. But outside of that, it's the same thing as before. Translate the symbols to the enemies, and then kill them in the order that the obelisk told you to. Once you do it correctly for a second time, the announcer will say that Ra has been appeased, and Ra will shoot the podium and the spawn room. Before we start the next step, let's get down to the end of the round. Let's get down to one or two zombies. When you're ready, interact with the pillar in the center of the podium. It'll teleport you down underground. Your goal here is to find four rods in the windows in this area and shoot them until they disappear. The best and the fastest way to do this is to just shoot them with your shield. If you run out of shield ammo, just go buy a new shield and it'll replenish your ammo. Once you shoot all four until they go through the ceiling, you'll hear the announcer speak and the barriers trapping you underground will leave. Before we go back up though, get kilowatt on your gun as you will need it for the next step. The next step is to go in the spawn room and charge up the rods that we just shot underground. If you look, they'll be behind each of the walls in the spawn room, and additionally there will be a faint outline of electricity on the ground around the metal rod. This outline indicates where you can do this step. How you do it is, you have to get a horde of zombies and activate your kilowatt on the horde. Now at this point, you have about 5 seconds to kill everything that's affected by kilowatt before kilowatt itself does. If Kilowatt itself kills the zombies, then they will not charge the rod. Now that might be confusing, so I'm going to explain it again, but I'm going to put it as simple as possible. Activate Kilowatt on the zombies and kill them with your gun before Kilowatt does. If you do, you'll see that you're charging the rod. Eventually, you'll fully charge it and it'll look like this, and when it does, you can move on to the other ones. 
we need to fully charge all four metal rods to advance to the next step. Now this sounds a little tedious, but I left out one major tip that'll make this go by pretty quickly. When a gladiator spawns in the map, you can kill it with your kilowatt gun next to the metal rod, and it'll instantly charge the metal rod up halfway. This means that you only need to kill two special enemies to fully charge a metal rod. This comes in especially helpful when there's a special round. So fill up all four rods and you'll see that the bulls in the podium will have wisps in them. At this point, get a new shield, get all your perks, and when you're ready, interact with the wisp to start what I consider to be the hardest step in this easter egg. I honestly think that this step is harder than the boss fight. To beat this step, you have to survive against like a hundred brawlers and tigers and destroyers all while there's fire in the map. The only upside of this step is when you kill an enemy, you'll immediately have your specialist meter refilled, even if you have it out. So as long as you're killing enemies, during this step you will have an infinite specialist. This is the reason why I said to bring the viper and dragons, because it is the only specialist for the chaos side that has a good ranged attack. But one thing you can do is, if you didn't level up your specialist to level 3 beforehand, and you think it's about to level up now, or if you just lost your specialist armor and you want to get it back, you can put away your specialist and then kill a tiger with one of your weapons and then immediately pull back out your specialist to have it leveled up or to have the armor back or whatever the problem was. There's not much else I can say to help you in this step, unfortunately, besides just stay on the run at all times and spam your viper and dragon and throw homunculus if you have them. After enough kills, You'll get a white flash and you'll be teleported back to the normal map and the announcer will say that Zeus has been appeased. Now if you're paying attention, then that means that there's only one god left to appease before the boss fight. And honestly, this is the easiest one to do. Get to the end of the round and then go underground. To beat this step, you have to perform trick shots on some symbols with your wonder weapon. And yes, I am serious about that. There's three sets of three symbols that you have to hit all with one shot. This is kind of annoying, but just Follow what I say and what I show on the screen and you should be able to line up your shots every single time. So first, get Witch's Wear to hold a zombie in the crypt area. Then come to this pillar outside of the entrance to Danu and you'll see a symbol on it. If you stand on the edge of this step and look straight ahead, you should be able to jump and shoot the symbol and the symbol should stay lit up. If you get this little wisp animation, then you have done it right and they will stay lit up. But if it just turns back on and then turns right back off, then you have not done it correctly and you have to try it again. For the second symbol, again, get Winter's Whale to freeze the zombie, but this time in the shield room. Then come to where the blade trap is. Stand right in front of the skull in the hallway and look in this hole in the wall to see the next symbol. On this symbol, there's like a little circle on it. If you put your crosshair directly on that and shoot that circle, that should keep all the symbols lit for the second set. The third and final set of symbols can be hit from right outside of the Zeus Tower. Again, get one as well to freeze a zombie in the temple this time, then come up right next to this pillar and aim a little to the left of the symbol to hit it. This one is the hardest one to hit in my personal opinion, so it might take you a couple tries, but if you can't get your shot to work for any of these symbols, just keep trying to adjust your aim and eventually it will work. After you light up all three symbols, you'll hear a character quote, and at this point, go to the pit area where the shield is and stand on this weighted plate. After around 5 to 10 seconds, it'll start a lockdown. To beat this, you have to defend yourself against three phases of zombies. The first phase mainly consists of zombies, tigers, and fire catalysts. The second phase has gladiators and all catalysts. And the third phase throws in a little bit of everything, including a blightfather. After you beat a phase, zombies will stop spawning and you'll get a max ammo. Now this max ammo doesn't have a timer on it, so it will never despawn. So if you don't need it as soon as it spawns, don't grab it. But yeah, this really isn't a hard step, and to be honest, it is kind of a boring step. If you're running Victorious Tortoise, and I hope that you are, sit in this corner right in front of the shield table and pull out your shield. Then just spray all the zombies down with the Brazen Bull. If you run out of ammo, just buy a new shield and keep shooting the zombies. If your shield breaks for whatever reason, Victorious Tortoise will create an explosion that will kill just about everything around you, giving you more than enough time to go buy a new shield. After the third phase is complete, nothing will spawn in. This is your cue to interact with this metal grate on the ground. All the barriers will go away, allowing you to leave, and now we are ready for the boss fight. So at this point, get all your guns upgraded, get all your perks, get full ammo, get a full shield, get homunculus, and whatever else you need to get ready. And when you are, make your way to the spawn room and opposite the gate that you spawned in, there will be a red orb. Interact with it to be teleported to the boss fight. 
There's three phases to this boss fight. When you spawn in, you have to kill a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of gladiators and tigers. At first, it'll just be gladiators to so just spam your wonder weapon at them, and they'll go down pretty easily. Max Amos will spawn in this boss fight, so don't worry about wasting your ammo or anything. Just kill everything as fast as you can. You can also throw homunculus to let them do the killing as well. After a while, tigers will start coming out of the gate. This is how you know that you're almost done with phase one. Keep killing the gladiators and the tigers, and after a little bit, you'll be thrown immediately into phase two, which is the first elephant. As soon as you hear the announcer speak or see the elephant come out the gate, throw homunculus away from you to focus fire on the elephant. Also, activate stock option as it'll help a lot here. To kill him, you have to shoot the gems on his side to destroy his armor, and then shoot his head to kill it. If you have the Spitfire or the Hades with the Operator mods on it, get real close to him and tap fire your weapon at the gem to see if you start getting hit markers. As soon as you do, spray the gem with your weapon. If you're close to him, he should just keep trying to turn around to face you, and if you keep turning with him, he'll just keep turning forever and he won't really be able to attack you. Now with saying that, he will land the occasional attack on you. The gladiators on its back will throw spears at you. These spears do do a lot of damage, but they don't throw him that often, so you should deal enough damage to where the armor will break before he kills you. If you don't feel comfortable getting up close to the elephant, you can play the range game, but not only will it take longer to kill him that way, but it'll additionally allow the elephant to do an extra attack to you. This attack being he can charge at you and fling you way up into the air, and most of the time when you land, you will die. So I would personally recommend getting up close to him, but it's ultimately up to you. When you break the gems, he should shake off his armor and let out some type of scream. And at this point, you need to get a little bit of distance from him and throw a second homunculus. After you do, focus fire on the glowing red spot on its head. Now, it's worth noting at this point that he can do an insta-kill attack that looks like this. So when you see him charging up, just stay on the run and it shouldn't be able to hit you. You can additionally pull your shield out for extra protection, but as long as you're running, you should be fine. But focus the red spot on his head, and after enough damage, he'll fall over and die, and that is phase 2 complete. If there's a max ammo anywhere on the field, now's the time to grab it. If not, just pop equipment to get back your homunculus. Now stand in front of the other gate. When you first see the second elephant come out the gate, throw the homunculus away from you and do the same thing as before. So get close to him, shoot his gems until the armor breaks, and then get away from him, Throw a second homunculus and shoot his red spot on his head, and after enough damage, the elephant will fall over and die. And once you kill the second elephant, you'll get the cutscene around 10 seconds later. And with that, you have successfully completed the 9 Easter egg. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you found this helpful, drop a like and subscribe if you're new. If you watch this guide and you're still having trouble after watching it, comment down below and I will try to help you out even further. I've made updated guides for all of BO4 except for Alpha and Tag and we will get to those in the very near future. I've also done Garage Kirby for Black Ops 3. If those don't interest you, however, you can check out these videos on the end screen right now, and I guarantee you at least one of them you will end up enjoying. Thank you guys so much for watching, and with that being said, this is Jolts, signing out. Peace!